In this tutorial, we are going to continue to learn more about how UV mapping works in Maya. And this time, we'll be creating our own UV maps by flattening out a, a basic cube or box shape and having a UV map of that and then bringing it into Photoshop so that we can draw on it ourselves. And so these are some examples from my students. Um, some of them did themselves as characters. Some of them chose um, other characters. But you can see that they have drawn on these um, these cubes. And we do that by drawing onto a 2D uh, object and then wrapping that around the 3D uh, shape that we have in Maya. And so you can see some examples here. And I will show you in this tutorial how we do this. So let's begin in Maya. I'm going to be begin by creating a cube. Um, and I've pressed Control A so that my channel box is visible. When I press Control A, it'll switch between my attribute editor, editor and my channel box because I want you to see as I change this, as I lift it up on the Y axis with the Move tool and as I press R and scale it larger, that is creating number changes in my channel box. So this cube actually begins as that basic shape. And then Maya applies a Y translation to it. So it moves it up 3.66. And then it scales at x, y, and z 2.138 every time. Um, this can cause some issues when I'm ready to UV map it. So the first thing that I need to do when I'm ready to UV map something is come here to Modify and choose Freeze Transformations. That will zero out all of those numbers and set that as the default uh, cube shape for my object and it will um, solve a lot of the problems that you may have with UV mapping later. Now if I look at my UV map, I'll come over here to my, my window options, right click on one of them and choose perspective slash UV editor. And when I choose that and I click on the box, you will see how this box is laid out. Now there is a default way that a, a box is, is flattened to create a UV map in Maya. Um, I don't care for it that much. If I choose my face sub objects here, you can see that's Probably what it would consider the front is the same as this one. It highlights them as I click on them. That would be the top. These are the sides. And then it wraps it around to the back like that, which can cause some issues about when you bring it into Photoshop about which direction is up on them. I prefer to uh, reset it myself. And so I'm going to come back here into object mode. You're probably, probably already there. And after I freeze the transformation, I want to go to UV, which is one of my menu options under the modeling drop down menu. So I'm in UV, and I will choose an automatic map. That will basically create a planar UV map all the way around my object. So now it's taken each of these shapes, and it's separated them. Um, I can see that a little bit more if I come in here and choose face in the UV map. I can then see, well, each of these things is separate. It's basically cut each of the six sides of the box, made sure that they are correct proportionally, and then place them back inside of my um, top right quadrant here, which is where quadrant, which is where it has to be to be a UV map. Now that's great. I could also just do that, but it's kind of confusing because I think it kind of arbitrarily places them. So like this is what I would consider my front face, and this one, which is way up here in the top left hand corner, is now the side, and the top one is here. So I would I want to sew it back together. And your sew tool, it may or may not be visible. You'll see that each of these uh, white lines inside of your UV editor can be opened and closed. And you're looking for this tool that looks like a square, a green square with an arrow going up and right through it. This is your sew edges tool. And this allows me to sew all my edges back. I'm going to choose edge in my 3D, my perspective view, and click this top edge here. Now that edge is selected, and I can see two edges in my UV editor. Select it. I think the second one is down here along this line. So this edge and this edge are actually this same edge. And they've been separated because we split up all of the faces when we did an automatic map. If I want to sew them back together, all I have to do is choose that edge and click Sew. And this is the method I use to, to do this. I always use my front face, and I do clockwise from the top. So I start with the top edge of my front face. I click Sew. I choose the right edge and click Sew. I choose the bottom edge and choose so. I choose the left edge and choose so. And that leaves only the back edge that hasn't been selected. And so I'll click on this back edge that's visible here and also sew that. And that should create a, uh, a 3D view that has been flattened out that makes a lot more sense for me. Um, now in some cases, like in mine, 
mine is actually oriented the wrong way. And I can tell that because when I choose the top edge of my face here, my edge is on the side. So I may have to do some, some rotation. I'll definitely have to resize it to fit into this light gray area of the UV map. So the easiest way to do that, I think, is to choose face as my sub-objects here in the um, UV editor, draw a big box around all of them, and now my W, E, and R, my move, rotate, and scale tools work for this UV map as well. So I can move it here. The easiest way to scale it is there's this, rot or to rotate it is this rotation tool. So I can rotate it counterclockwise if I need to, and then I have to shrink it down to scale. So I press R and I scale it down so that fits inside of this box. And then once again, I can check to make sure everything's right. I'll go back to edge here. Now that front edge is on the top here and here, I'm ready to go. Now I want to bring this into Photoshop. Photoshop and Maya work really well with each other. And the first step, the thing that's easy to forget, is you need to be in the complete object mode. You can't be selected on edges or faces to be able to do this. And you'll tell that you are, if you get into this next part and your attributes are empty, that's because you didn't uh, do this. So I want to make sure to right click on my perspective view and go back to object mode and make sure that all of it is selected. And now in my menu options for the UV editor, I can come here to image create PSD network. That is a Photoshop network. Um, there's a lot of things here. Uh, let's start from the top. The first one is where it will save the Photoshop file. So I want to make sure that that's in a place that I uh, will remember and recognize. And I'm going to call this face UV. I want it to open Photoshop for me so that I don't have to go and hunt for the file and open it. And I want to do the largest possible resolution. So I'll make sure that this slider is slid all the way to the right. And then down here, there are many different attributes that I can uh, draw maps for. I can do a transparency map, which we'll talk about later. I can do bump maps, incandescent maps. Right now, I'm only dealing with the color map for the object. So I choose color, and I click this right arrow to make that one of my selected attributes. Now when I choose Create, it will open up Photoshop, and everything will be ready for me to draw in. Now here I am in Photoshop. These white lines are a template. They are a representation of where it'll be looking for the UV map. So anything inside of this white area here will be on the front of my box, on the top, on the right side, left side, bottom, and back. If I draw out here where it isn't inside of one of my UV maps, it won't appear at all. And also another thing to remember is that this layer for the UV snapshot, you can't draw on this. The only things that will appear on your actual finished um, when you bring it back into Maya are things that are inside of this Lambert color folder. And so in this case, I need to choose this. Now layer one is gray. The reason why that exists is if I throw that away, it's really hard. You can't see your template lines. And so I usually will draw on top of layer one, and eventually I'll throw away layer one. So I click on layer one. I create a new layer. I know it's inside of this Lambert folder because it's indented and it's the color folder. So now whatever I draw in here should appear in my program. So I'm going to draw Finn from Adventure Time. So I'll start by getting a, maybe I'll get a white brush here. I'll click on my foreground color, choose a white brush, make sure I'm on brush and in a new layer, and I'm just going to paint um, white. Now that might be a little confusing later because the white will actually cover up my white of my template, so I'm just going to do this part of his head first. And In fact, because the rest of his head will all be white too, I could probably just keep going. Um, now I want to have the oval in the middle of that skin tone, so I went and found a skin tone hex color code and put that in. And because it's an oval, I'll use my ellipsis tool, but I could just draw it with the brush too. That would be perfectly fine. I don't want it to go outside of that line, so I've got that, and then I can use my brush. I'm going to make a brush. I right click to change the hardness of the brush. And make his eyes. Okay, not bad for quick. Now, to get this back into Maya, 
An easy thing to forget is you really you need to save the Photoshop file before Maya will recognize any changes you've made. So I need to make sure that this asterisk that's telling me I haven't saved yet isn't there anymore. So I can press Control S. What you can't do is change the name of this file or its location. Maya is looking in the specific place where you created this originally and for that specific name. If you change the name or you move it, that will disconnect it and we'll have to reconnect those files. So now I'll go back to Maya. And when I click on this, you will see that it should be, oh, and I think I, did I, well, well, it's coming in a little bright, so you can't really see my, my oval there. But now you can see that my UV map is updated. After the first time, you usually have to come here to image and say update PSD networks to see those changes again. And another problem that often comes up is it doesn't look like it's appearing on my actual perspective. But if I go to... Um, if I render it, it is there. And the reason for that is that I have to press 6 when I'm in the perspective mode to turn on the shaded display. It, it's there, it's just not showing it to you until you press 6, but you should only need to do that once. And now you can see that it is on there. And now if I go back into Photoshop and I change it some more, so maybe I'll add more white for the rest of the boxes. try to do this really quickly here and I, I'm not worrying about going outside of the line because anything outside of the template won't show up that's why the template is there and then eventually when I'm done there's not a lot I picked him because there's not a lot going on that I have to draw I can go ahead and throw away that gray layer I don't really need it in there or I can keep it if I you know it's not gonna make any difference either but now when I save this and go back into Maya I can go to image update network and now it has updated it completely and there I go. Now the last part of this is now I can create more things. Unfortunately, because when I started I didn't change uh, the material that it started with, I actually did Lambert 1, which is the default material. So any new shape that you bring in now will have this material on it, and it's not going to map correctly onto pretty much anything else. So I need to make sure I go into my Hypershade and create a new material for it, maybe like a Lambert 2, and apply that to that before I start doing the same thing. But once again, the process is exactly the same. I begin by freezing the transformation. I go to my UV editor, and I do uh, an automatic map, and then I stitch it back together. And then I can bring that one into a separate Photoshop file and manipulate that too. And I could keep doing this for arms or legs or for anything else I need to until I get a character that I have created the map for myself.